Welcome back. Thank you again for listening in. Our next guest is an actor I met 10 years ago whilst he was training at the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama. Since then, he's gone on to have a very brilliant start to his career and a very diverse start to his career, working in both television, film, theatre and radio. He has been on The Archers for four years, much to my mum's absolute delight, playing the character of Chris. Welcome, Will Scolding. It's lovely to see you. How are you? Hi, I'm really well. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, thank you for agreeing to come on. As you know, the topic of conversation is my passion for purpose. So it's really getting guests um, to really talk about what it is that they're passionate about in life and how they have made it their purpose. So maybe I could start with that. I know you will have a little chat about your acting career as well, but you know, you've done big work since you've left the drama, left drama school. And I know you're still very heavily involved in that life. But beyond that, as I know, please tell our listeners what it is that you're really passionate about. Uh, I love cooking for people. I love being mm -hmm. of service and I love uh, sharing food with people. So you started life as a chef? I did, yeah. I, I, I was a chef before I got into drama school. Uh, I left sixth form and fell into the chef life. Um, I came back to a job at Las Iguanas, uh, a bar job, but they didn't have any spots behind the bar left. So they said, oh, we'll train you up as a chef if you like. And I was like, great, yeah. Um, so I sort of fell into it and loved it, but um, realised quite quickly that as much as I loved that, I didn't want to make a career out of it. And so I kept on trying to get into drama school and you got into the Royal Welsh She had three amazing years and like I said you've gone on to do this really eclectic 10 years of work since um, but tell me about this passion and this purpose of cooking how that's also worked into charitable work since for you um, so in 2015 uh, the headlines were sort of awash with um, the refugee crisis in Calais uh, the jungle um, where there were around 10,000 refugees from all over the world living rough in a field in Calais. Um, and it was actually my brother, my, my elder brother, who's a doctor, who went out and started doing some uh, sort of medical assistance work out there. And I thought, what can I, I I'd love to be of, of, of help as well. And what, what do I have that I can offer? Um, and then I remembered I'm a chef um, and people need food. Um, so I went out and uh, found a charity out there called Refugee Community Kitchen um, and sort of fell in love with them. They do fantastic work and still do fantastic work out there and also here. Um, uh, and I started cooking for them and was inspired by um, their passion and their constant I'm starting to waffle here. I was inspired by the incredible attitude and hard work of people who had just come together to do a good thing. There was no money involved at all. Yeah. Um, they just wanted to help. And that, I think, is human nature. Uh, I think everybody has that in them. If you see somebody in need and want to help, the people that act on that, uh, I think, are amazing. I love that. I, I'm completely listening to you because what has come out of lockdown for so many people is a how uh, lucky we are in life mm. to have the simple things and all the other stuff that we were chasing and consuming and collecting is so futile for when you just think i've got my health which is wealth i've got my family thank goodness and we have we are a family who've all been hit by covid and it got pretty ugly and i think we've all had a real exhale and thank you that we've come through it but also on the other side of that are, is that question of what really counts and am I showing up for myself and for the community this collective to give back something that I can do and we've heard amazing stories haven't we come out of lockdown like the, the work that Marcus Rashford is championing and how the volunteer service came to the NHS uh, really swiftly we all sort of leapt forward to say what can we do you know at the time that we were all clapping every Thursday night so there is this sense you're absolutely right that in every being I believe there is that innate 
want to give back and serve. So what you've done, you know, since going on that trip to coming home to six years on, tell our listeners about what you're doing now from that journey. Um, so I have been running a soup kitchen with my friend Hermione uh, for the past two years in Brixton. Um, there is a there is a, a soup kitchen called Brixton Soup Kitchen, uh, which runs Monday to Friday. So we didn't want to compete with them. Um, so we, we thought we'd start one on Sundays. Um, and I got in touch with the guys at Refugee Community Kitchen and through their support, we've started Refugee Community Kitchen Brixton, RCK Brixton. Uh, so we run every Friday and we cook uh, rice and curry and a try and make a nutritious meal, hot meal, and we give it out at 5.30 uh, every Sunday. Um, but what's also lovely is that local vendors have got involved. So uh, there's a pizza place called Share a Slice, who are fantastic, and they give us uh, 15, 20 freshly cooked pizzas every Sunday to mm. give out, which go very quickly. Mm. Um, and Gail's Bakery as well, uh, they, they give us uh, their leftover fresh stuff for the day. Um, so it's brilliant. We, we're feeding sort of 40, 50 people a, a, a week at the moment. That's amazing. I love that. So, you know, that's how it's all coming together. Your chefing days have not, they've not been in vain. And I mean, look how you're feeding people now. So um, based in Brixton, as you say, and how many, what's the volunteer situation like? How many of you all together helping out? We've got, I think, roughly 140, 150 people on a WhatsApp group, which is just that's extraordinary. Incredible. Um, but what I sort of feel guilty about is that we, because we've been streamlining the service because of COVID, um, we've been trying to get as few volunteers in, in, involved every Sunday as possible to try and minimise you know, yes. contact. Yeah. Uh, so we haven't got... Uh, we're, we're, we're in talks with other people about expanding the organisation um, to try and create more opportunities for people mm -hmm. to volunteer. Um, but as you say, just the goodwill of people, of so many people, is, um, is extraordinary. And that's the beautiful thing that's come out of this chapter of life, isn't yeah. it? You know, we've really, really got to see that. And that's what's so tender and heart and heartfelt. Mm -hmm. um, I had a question. For, sorry, I'm a bit I'm still imagining all these people. You see the regulars every Sunday and they come in for their food. Um, what what what's come out for their living situation? Are they refugees? Are they homeless? Is it a mix of people? We've actually been trying to reach more of the refugee population in Brixton. Uh, so my sister uh, speaks fluent Arabic, so we've started to translate ah. her. Uh, I know she's much cooler than me. Um, uh, she, um, I've actually got her to translate uh, our posters into Arabic, so we're trying to reach more of um, the Arabic-speaking population in Brixton. Um, at the moment, I think our numbers of, of, of guests that we're reaching I think it's going to steadily rise because of the situation and because uh, the government have, uh, have done a good job about getting people into hotels, getting rough sleepers into hotels. But I think, I think uh, that's starting to come to an end. So I suspect right. our, our numbers of people that we'll be feeding will, will steadily okay. rise. Okay, brilliant. So again, tell me, so do you go through just giving or crowdfunding? What, how do you get the money? How do you get the food? You get your sponsors, your donors and how well, else? Yeah, well, we have a, a company uh, that one of our volunteers put us in touch with called Classic Fresh Foods, who are a catering company, catering okay. um, and they, we put our orders in, so it's like being a head chef again, putting your orders in um, nice. for the head, uh, and they just deliver us free, uh, free fresh, beautiful fruits and veg every mm -hmm. week. It's mm -hmm. fantastic. This, it's is, this, is, this is what's just really lovely and humbling uh, in people can be so kind uh, and give that, that is our inherent nature, isn't it? That is what we're all trying to come home to, I believe. So this has been so inspiring, Will. Can I ask you one more question? Um, if there's someone listening to this and they can relate to your journey and they might be stuck or in a rut with getting to the life that they were born to live, what piece of advice could you give them? Uh, that's a tricky one. Um, a big one. It's a big one, yeah. Sorry, guys, can you ask it again? 
Yeah, I'm not into small talk, by the way. I love big talk. So I'll get right to it. A piece of advice that you might have for someone listening who is really contemplating a change out of lockdown, whether it be with their career or the way that they live or what they really want to aspire to and and invite into their their life. What would you say to that person who's procrastinating from finding their passion and making it their purpose? If I was talking to someone who's procrastinating, I'd be very strict and I'd say, stop it. Don't get comfy. Uh, and put yourself in new situations where you are pushing yourself, you know, take an evening class uh, in, in you know, pottery or something that you've never tried before. Uh, explore different avenues. If you haven't, if you felt you haven't found your passion yet, then put yourself in situations where you might mm. uh, say yes to things that you might not otherwise do. Don't, um, don't get comfy. Mm. Um, and if you have found your passion yet, uh, then do things that enable you to pursue it. You know, um, I, I'm, I'm doing a chef shift tonight, so that I, uh, you, you know, because got bills to pay. Um, and that enables me to, to be free for auditions when they come along and stuff like that. Um, don't get comfy. And there's no finished product as well. I think in drama school, there's this idea, or I felt there was anyway, there's this idea of, of being an actor. And if you've made it, then it's fine. You can just sit around and wait for the phone to ring and, uh, and jobs come in. And, and that does happen for maybe one person out of a million, but for the rest of us. You can't just sit around and I think it's very bad for you to sit around anyway. Yeah, I totally agree. I think we all have to step outside our comfort zone. Don't worry about the end goal. Just go for it. What's the worst that can happen, you know? Yeah. Um, and don't give up. Yeah. Well, it's been amazing. I love the work that you're doing um, and the journey you're on. And thank you so much for being a guest and best of luck with the next chapter. Thank you very much for having me, Debs. It's lovely to see you. Lovely to see you too. Bye. Bye-bye.